In the next step, you would use the white bond to create what we call bucky bowls. So there are two available bonds here. And all I'm going to do is connect these together with one of the white bonds. And you can see here, again, there are two of these available bonds adjacent to one another. And again, I'm going to use one of the white bonds to connect those together. Again, here, there are two adjacent bonds. I'm going to use one of the white bonds just to connect those together. And you can see that at this point, the combination of pentagons and hexagons is causing the structure to curve into a bowl shape. So again, you can see that I've got these two adjacent available bonds. So I'm just going to join those together. And finally, two adjacent available bonds. I'm going to join those together. Like that. And what I have here, if I just turn it round, you can see it has a bowl shape. So it's called a bucky bowl. And the combination of pentagons and hexagons gives it that curved shape. And using the remainder of the bonds that I have here, uh, I can make another identical version of the Bucky Bow. At this point, I have two identical Bucky Bowls. Each of these contains 30 carbon atoms, so six pentagons each. With the remaining white bond, I'm going to join these two buckyballs together to make the spherical C60 molecule. Now, there are two ways of doing this, and based on bond strain, it should be obvious which of the two naturally occurs. Now, if I take these two buckyballs, and if I was to combine them like this... This combination would be very strained. Okay, so if you look, if I try to connect them, it's going to be very, very difficult. Okay, there's huge strain on that back bond, a 90 degree bond angle. So, the alternative is to join them together like that. So you can see the bowls are completely identical, but you make sure that you do not attach identical atoms to one another. Okay, so what I've done is I've attached um, different atoms to each other. Okay, so if you try to attach the same ones, then you get that bond strain. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to work my way around and just connect the atoms together. So they, when I make that first connection, I've formed a hexagon. And that, if you build the models, you'll find is a very nice, stable shape. So again, I've got two available bonds here. I'm just going to join those together. And again, I've just created another nice stable hexagon. Again, I've got two available bonds here. I'm just going to add them. Add a white bond. Like that. And I'm going to continue and work my way around the structure.
there you are. That is a model of C60, also known as Buckminster fullerene or simply a bucky ball. We can now take our molecule and we can convert it into a slightly larger molecule called C70. We're going to do that by taking this molecule apart. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the stage where we had the two bucky bowls. So I've started by taking my bucky ball and I've placed it on top of one of the pentagons. And if you do that, it should be fairly easy to see how you can separate the two bucky balls. So the two bucky balls should each have 30 carbon atoms each. So all I'm doing is dividing this molecule into two parts with an equal number of carbon atoms. Now notice that I've separated those so that one of the buckyballs uh, doesn't have any white bonds sticking off uh, and one of them has all of the available white bonds sticking off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add white bonds to this buckyball to make it the same as this buckyball. There, now we've got two identical buckyballs uh, as we did before, except this time they both have white bonds uh, connected to all of the available bonding points on the carbons. And what I'm going to do to make C70 is I'm going to add a carbon atom to each of the white bonds on one of the models. So there, I've added one carbon atom. And I'm just going to work my way around and I'm going to add carbon atoms to all of the available points on one of the models. Having added the carbon atoms, I'm now going to use my remaining white bonds to turn this into a small hexagon, like that. Again, I've got two carbon atoms adjacent to each other, and I can turn that into a small hexagon. Again, I've got two carbon atoms next to each other, and I can turn that into a small hexagon. And now, uh, similar to before, I'm going to take these two bowl-shaped entities and I'm going to join them together. And once again, there are two ways of doing it. You could, and you could do this by trial and error, you could start by adding the molecules together as I've done here. Okay, But that won't work because if I try to now connect this to that, Hopefully you can see that there's going to be quite a lot of strain on that back bond. We're going to end up with a 90 degree bond angle. And so, by trial and error, this is the correct combination. Like that. And again, if I connect the next available two points, I've formed a nice stable hexagon. And again, if I now connect the next two points, I've formed a nice stable hexagon. And all the way around, joining them together, hexagon after hexagon, knitting the two balls together to eventually make 
make a molecule of C70. Like that. So you can see it's just like C60, except there are 70 carbon atoms, and that gives a slightly elongated shape, not unlike a rugby football.